In today's video, you're gonna learn how to animate X particles with music using the sound modifier. Let's go. Hey friends, it's Nick here again from grayscalegorilla.com, bringing you the tools, training, and tutorials to help make you a better motion designer. Now today we have a fun tutorial all about X particles, but before we get to that, if you haven't purchased X particles yet, or looking at getting it in the near future, consider getting it through grayscalegorilla.com, where we include over 30 presets to get you up and running with X particles. So check that out if you're interested. You can get a link to it down in the show notes, and I'll link it up here here at YouTube as well. All right, with that, let's head on into today's tutorial. Today's tutorial is about controlling particles in X particles using the sound modifier. Now, the new sound modifier makes it really easy to bring in sound, music, sound effects into X particles and then control the speed or the color and other parameters inside of X particles using that sound. We're gonna make some really fun animations today. So enough talking, let's head on into Cinema 4D and let's get started with today's tutorial. First I wanted to show you the final result. And this is based on a drum loop that I made in GarageBand. Now, I made a drum loop in GarageBand just so I could share this with you and, and keep it all copyright free. Uh, however, you can use your own MP3s, any songs you have to control all this stuff. And uh, just uh, when we get to the point where I show you where to put the so sound file, uh, you can use AIF files, you could use MP3 files. I also wanted to uh, remind everybody if you do have any, um, any iTunes music or other music that is DRM'd and you put it in to cinema, it will crash. Uh, I did it. I had some songs I downloaded from uh, from iTunes, and I put it in, and I got an instant crash. So just a little warning there. So let's get right to it. Let me show you this here. This is um, this animation here. Let me shrink it down so it's a little easier to play. Got a lot going on. But this is an animation where the um, particles are being emitted based on a drum beat. And uh, that drum beat was, again, made in uh, GarageBand and flung around the screen here and you can see we're affecting not only the speed but also the color of our particles and the emission of our particles all with sound. So let me show you another one here that's pretty fun. This one's really cool. And uh, we can kind of build both of these today uh, really quickly using X particles. And so let's jump right in and let me show you how to do that. So first of all, um, you need X particles 3.5. Now, if you own X particles 3, this is a free update to get 3.5. If you own X particles 2.5, you can get uh, an update um, through Grayscale Gorilla at a, at a reduced price to get to 3.5. And if you don't own X particles, um, you can also get it through Grayscale Gorilla, obviously. And you will actually get this scene file that we build today, including uh, over 30 other scene files that we uh, include with our customers to get you up and running in X particles. So, uh, if you, and uh, well, I'll say one more thing. If you want to follow along and you uh, haven't purchased X particles, you could also download a free demo at their site. So, let's get right to it. There's a lot of intro <laughs> without messing around. So, let's go. Um, I added an XP system. This is the first thing we do. This just organizes our X particles uh, scene a little bit. And then we want to come down here. Let me move this up so we can have a little bit more room. And I'm going to go to choose generator emitter. And in this case, I'm going to go to our object. And instead of a rectangle, if we hit play, you can see we have particles flinging out. And instead of a rectangle, I'm going to use a, uh, let's go with cylinder. So cylinder I'm going to use because it's more of a, like almost like a speaker shape and it's more uh, so, well cylindrical and it's going to spit out particles kind of in in uh, all directions going out like that. And so I'm also going to use ring only. You can see there are a few particles that come straight out the front and the back of the cylinder and we don't want that as much as we want just up and straight up and down. Okay. So there it is. There's our um, cylinder. And I want you to be able to see these particles more. Uh, by default, it's kind of this light green. Uh, and to change just the display of your particles, you can come over here to display under your emitter. And you can say, I want these to be something more visible here on the screen. This blue might do it. Um, but also, you can change the size or the display type. In this case, we could use squares. And uh, now you can see you can see that way better. 
Last thing I'm going to do is shrink down our object here just a little bit, just so it's a little bit smaller. And so there you go. Okay. So how do we start to emit this um, based on sound? We want speed, we want color, we want all this stuff. Well, we can go up to our XP system and go to our, uh, I think it's control modifiers and go to the new sound controller. And you're gonna see, this is gonna bring up this uh, link right here. This is the sound link. And this is where you're gonna put your file. I've tried it with AIF files. I've tried it with MP3 files. I'm assuming WAV files work. I haven't tried them. Um, but let's lo load in a, um, a uh, AIF file. And again, this is a drum loop I made in uh, GarageBand. And, uh, but you could pick any MP3 from your library, anything you have around. You could even go sing into a microphone and, and bring that in. So any audio should work. And now you, you see that we have this graph. What this graph displays now is kind of the velocity of uh, our, our scene. And if I turn up our decibels, you're gonna it's gonna brighten it up a little bit more. And you're gonna see now that this is kind of our general volume knob. This is how I'm seeing this graph. This is our general volume knob on how it's reading this MP3 and what, how much signal we're gonna give the full system. Okay, so now we have an equalizer. We could turn up and down parts of the uh, song. We could turn uh, up the bass a little bit more and give that more prominence. We could turn up the treble a little bit more. You can see all the treble up top there. And this will kind of give us our overall graph. Now, if you're not familiar with sound um, in general, uh, and, and kind of sound, uh, you know, physics, um, sound has different frequencies and they go from low to high. The lower the frequency, the more bass or the lower the note and the higher the frequency, the more treble and um, more splashy and like that noise is up top. So one thing to, one thing to think about is when you're isolating things and and basically what we're going to try to do is isolate parts of this track the, there's a there's a kick drum and a snare drum and a hi hat and we're going to try to isolate those uh sounds from the drum kit and try to make our particles move when we want them to and so the first thing um i should do is actually hit play and show you that there is no sound coming out of this modifier it is not playing in our um, scene by default. So what we can do is uh, just add any old object. And this is kind of a hack, but it works pretty quickly. And I'm, just to just to set it really quickly, I'm gonna set a keyframe for this object. And I'm, you know what? There's probably a smarter way to do this, but I'm gonna go to our timeline, select our object that's in our timeline, go up to create special tracks, go to sound, select sound, and we have to pick that same sound file right here. Let's go pick it. That's our drum loop. Now, when we hit play, hopefully, we can we can actually just hide this cube. That's just there to have sound. Let me turn it up. Let's play sound. All right. Well, that's fun. Let's make sure this is all working here. F, Dropbox, that's correct. This should have done it. Sue it. Okay, well, sorry about that, folks. Uh, looks like we had an error I've never seen when doing this effect. And I think it was caused um, by other software that was opened and it could have been caused by just having cinema open too long. I'm actually not sure what that was, but it looks like we're back to it working now. Check this out. We got our drum beat in cinema. It's playing back. And, um, you know, if you, if you run into something like that, just restart cinema, maybe restart your machine, start fresh. But that was just uh, something I've never bumped into before. And uh, that's now we're back to where we need to be. So. Let's continue on with the tutorial and show you how to affect these particles now using that drum beat. Um, so in our sound effector, you can see we have this uh, kind of set up here. We can go to map sound and we can click add. Now, once we click add, the default's gonna be color. And let me just click play and you can see it's starting to work already. 
Um, you can see the colors of our particles changing from blue to white all the way through. And if we reduce this decibel range, we're going to get different colors. In this case, we're going to get reds and blues. And if we crank it up, it's going to be more at the top of the range here. It's going to be more white. So this decibel range is what controls uh, the volume basically of our system. Now, if you've ever played with something like trap code, um, sound keys or anything like that, um, you, you might have learned a little bit more about, you know, how sound and, and frequencies work. But this right here is a visual representation of our frequencies from low, very low to very high. And this is more real time. This is in, in order of the track going through. You can see, you can see each little beat right there is going to be represented by a different spike. This graph is a little bit different. This graph is going to be the overall range of our frequencies from low to high. So you can see when the kick drum hits, it's going to be heavier down here. And when the snare hits, it's going to be up here more. And in fact, this frequency right here, you can see it's really going from low to high. And as it gets really high, it's even going down. And this is because of a few things. First of all, high frequency um, energy has less energy than low frequency energy. If you ever um, try to, you know, have a sound come out of your uh, cell phone, uh, you know that it, it can produce high frequencies very well. Um, however, the low frequencies need much more power and much more space and much more energy to recreate. So these are actually much bigger in, in volume uh, I keep hitting space bar, sorry. Uh, these are much bigger in volume than up here. The other thing is, is that there's really not a lot of sound going on above around 10,000, 20,000 is I think the limit of hearing is around 22,000 um, uh, hertz. So uh, you can reduce this down and kind of focus in on the frequencies that you want to control. Right here we have frequency minimum is zero. Uh, and now at the lower parts of uh, of hearing, the lower parts are more around 30 hertz, um, 20 hertz. Anything below that is just you're, you're just hearing vibration like in the furniture sometimes. Um, so I, I like to actually crop out this lower little chunk right there uh, and just kind of concentrate on like 100 and above. Um, and so that'll just get rid of the super low frequencies. And then up here, you know, I don't think we're going to control anything with symbols. So we could just set this to 10,000. And now we have a drastically different graph. Okay. It's a little bit more even. And it's going to give us a little bit more control. And you can now more visually see, if I turn this up, that the bass hit is more down here. That's the bass and lower frequencies. And the tra uh, uh, snare, snares are usually around 3,000 to uh, about 1,000 to 5,000. Uh, uh, cycles, uh, hertz, up in this frequency here. So we're already at 10,000. And this scale, um, it doubles. As it doubles, our pitch goes up uh, uh, again and again. It actually goes, uh, doubles our pitch every time this number doubles. So 100 to 1,000 is a double, and 1,000 to 10,000. And so, um, actually, that's not quite the right math. But what I'm saying is, the base, it looks like to me that the base frequencies are actually more um, visible in this graph than the higher ones. It's got more detail, in other words. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to turn this frequency max down to like, let's go 1,000. 100 to 1,000 is going to be our, our, our kind of kick drum. And if we shrink down our decibel range, we want only that little kick right there to show up in our box when the kick drum goes off. So I'm going to reduce it even more. You can look up frequencies of different instruments as well. I might set this back to 60 to get a little bit more of that. And now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so this color is nice, but we're not really seeing a lot of what's going on. So let's change this to a mission. Now we're getting a really clear about our sound. And in fact, so we're not listening to the same drum beat 70 seconds over and over again. Let me, let me extend this. Let's go to 500. I think this whole clip actually is about 800. 
Okay. So now, every time that kick drum goes off, we're going to see a big spike in particles. Okay, and you can see the Tom Toms actually showed up as well, so we could probably clip our frequency down even more. But this is how we're setting up our controlling particle system. Now, we're actually seeing each drum hit as if the speaker itself was expanding uh, particles out of it. Okay, so that's emission. Now, the other cool thing is we could say speed as well. So now let's add speed. And we could dial these same numbers in. And we could say, boom, 60 to 500. And in this case, I want the speed of our particles to be controlled by how loud that frequency is. And the minimum speed is going to be zero and the maximum speed is 100. So now you can see it's um, expanding some of them faster, some of them slower. And now we're even giving more of a, um, even more of a uh, kind of sound wave effect with these particles here. Okay. While we're here with speed, I wanted to show you something really fun. I'm going to turn down our emission just so we play it back very quickly. But I also want to talk about this button right here, birth only. And this button right here is all about um, uh, if if this speed graph controls only the birthing of the particles or if they control all of the particles. And let me show you the difference. Right now, let's just play this back with it off or with it on. Okay, typical kind of sound wave like expanding. Now, let's restart this, turn this off, and let me show you the difference. Now, hopefully you can see this and hear it as well. What's happening is all the speed of all the particles are only moving when that drum beat happens. In fact, I'm gonna crank this up way higher so we can really see the expansion. Cool, right? So I could tone this back down to keep it a little bit smaller and I could set our minimum to something like not completely off. That's kind of a cool effect, right? Okay, so this effect right here is how I made that that other animation that you saw. I think it still might be up. But look in this blog post on the blog and you'll see the one that expands as it as the timing happens. And the way the only other thing that I added to that one is I added color and then I made my own color system. I think it was more like uh, an orange to a red. I just I just pulled these right off the graph to make it orange to red to white. Okay, and now I could copy these numbers again down here. And then I could kind of move this down and make the color uh, where I want it. Oh, we're gonna need a little bit more energy in this one to pull this off. Could also tone down our red. And I want our decibel range to come down a little bit. And there we go. I think I'm going to turn off birth only for this as well. I'm going to rewind this. And you just got to dial this in right. So right now we're getting red and black, which means it's going too far down. We're getting a little bit of orange, which is okay. Try birth on again. Now, again, if we turn off birth only, we're going to get different colors based on the speed, right? But we want that kind of jittery effect. We could turn this off. And then we could turn on something like, uh, let's go with, I think I, what I had was the uh, turbulence set turned on. And then I turned on something more like a wavy turbulence or something like that. So now look, we have this really kind of weird organic thing going on. And if I turn down the speed of our sound, let's do that. Let's go to 100. It's gonna cluster around a little bit more and then as we mess with our turbulence, it's gonna affect it even more. So obviously smaller scale on our turbulence. And now you can see it's blinking to the, to the brightness color 
And so we could play around with our colors here a little bit. We could turn this down and try to get it more clipping into that white as it turns up. No, see, I thought it would. Oh, I see. Here it is. Peak amplitude. So that whole problem is fixed right there. So peak amplitude is going to blend us a little bit more between these colors. And now you're going to see that we're going to get different colors based on that. So hitting render, you may see a problem that you've already tried before. If you hit render without having a texture on your X particles, you will be goner. So what you can do is go to your shader and say X particles material. Let's put this on our emitter. And now whatever color the particle is, is going to show in that scene. So let's just, there we go. Boom. Got it. Okay. So this turbulence is not doing it for me. Let's try curl. Oh, that's much better. Okay. So now you can see we have some particles going on. Uh, the other thing I want to do right now is eventually scale our particles off uh, down to zero and also have them kind of uh, die over time. So instead of full lifespan in our emitter, we could turn that off and set this lifespan to like, I don't know, 100, let's say. And then we can go to our uh, modifiers here and I want to get our scale modifier, which I always forget where it is. There's so many dang modifiers. And I just want to pick the one that does scale. Here it is. Generate modifier scale. And in this case, uh, I'm going to use a graph. So this scale modifier, I can come into our parameter to change operation. Here it is. Use spline. Now what this is going to do is going to let me use spline controls to scale up and down our particles over time. So at birth, I want them to be at zero very qu quickly. I want them to jump way up, make them very large. And then I want them to scale back down to zero as they die. So let's rewind and see what that looks like. We could zoom in a little bit more into our particles here. And now you can see it's going to, as they die off, as they get to their smaller part here, they're going to do that. Now I want to say set particle radius, and that's actually going to set our particle radius of our objects instead of, um, the uh, scale and there we go. We have our particles flinging around much better. You can see they're much bigger in the start and then they fade off to zero as they go off and then they eventually die at around hundred frames. Okay. So that's good. We could also um, vary their lifespan so they don't all die at the same time. So let's just set 20 frames for that. And then now this scene needs a light. We can move a light up and over and try to add a little shadow to the scene so that our particles are uh, giving a little shadow to each other. Now, in this case, we have these really flat particles. Um, we can keep those. We can also go to uh, our illumination and use something more like Fong, which Fong is going to give us more of like a little, little spheres. And we could also try one of these other ones too. These bottom three are pretty fun. They shadow each other really well, but they're still kind of flat. So try them out. See if you like it. I kind of like the look of the Fong one just gives us more like their little particles. Okay. So that is that you don't really want your light to be, um, kind of touched by the particles because then it's going to really cast a weird shadow. So make sure it's far enough away. That's what it looks like red. And that looks nice. That actually looks pretty cool with, with the specular going on right there. Let's turn that, let's zoom in on that. And let's also turn our specular up since that specular is looking so cool. Check that out. Pretty interesting. Okay. So there is one way to do this. And this is more similar, um, to that one, uh, in our, in our, uh, set in our examples, the one that is more like this obviously is set up with that sound. However, if you want it more traditional, if you want it more like the audio is blasting out, um, you could turn that off and, and we could change some things. So this is where X particles always, we always end up with X particles, which is okay. Well, that's how you set it up. That's how you do it. And you know, tutorial over, right? Well, because you can add and, and change things so fast in X particles and try different things. I end up with scene file after scene file after scene file of like saving it and then tr 
tweaking a couple things and going like, ooh, I like this one too, and then I save that one. And then I tweak a couple things and I hit play and I'm like, ooh, I, I like that one too. It's it's like resetting up the dominoes every time and then selecting different parts of, uh, selecting different, literally different gravity and seeing what the dominoes do when you, when you hit play. So it's really fun to play with. Let's do a couple more before we take off. Um, in this case, I'm gonna say, birth only, no, I want it to actually uh, spit out there. I like that the particles are scaling down, but I'm gonna turn off our turbulence altogether. And in this case, uh, I like the way that the, um, uh, I like the way that these concentric circles are happening, but in this case, I wanna add some gravity. So I'm gonna go to our um, motion modifiers and add um, uh, gravity, which I know is in here, there it is. And so now we have some gravity, but I think it's a little bit too much. So two things we could do to fight gravity. Well, we could turn up our speed. So we can go to our sound and say more speed, which in this case might be higher. There we go. So that's good. We could also turn down the gravity a little bit. So let's go to our gravity and go to our object and just turn it down. Okay, so that's pretty good. Well, okay, so maybe we do need turbulence, but not that crazy a turbulence. So let's set this back to regular turbulence. And I like how this is going. The scale is a little bit too large for me, for my taste. But you know, we got some weird stuff going on. We could turn down our strength a little bit. And this is kind of trippy. <laughs> we'll turn down our strength even more, maybe our scale up a little bit. <laughs> It's almost fighting our, um, it's almost fighting our uh, gravity. So we could turn it off Y axis altogether. So that way the gravity at least falls. That is really weird. Okay, so now, you know, we could, we could render this out and this will be similar to what we had. We have our shadows going on. We may have to turn our shadows a little bit more, maybe actually our density of our particles up a little bit to be able to see these shadows a little bit better. Um, however, one last fun thing we could do uh, I promised I wouldn't say one last thing. Always gets me in trouble. I think there's, uh, on the live show, There's I think there's a drinking game going on when I say one last thing. So excuse me if we say that one more time. But uh, on our emitter, we could start to animate stuff on our emitter and then we have two layers of animation. We have the actual sound kicking out different pieces there. But then what if we want that to move around? Well, this is, I was playing with this last night. I added a, sorry, signal to our emitter and I changed two things with it. Um, I took the radius of our cylinder and I put that in our uh, signal and I just put a sine wave on it. And I said, I don't want it to go negative, but I do want it to go positive. So positive 20 and negative 20 and our loop point, I want it to be at about 20 frames. So now this scaled up and down and gave big waves and smaller waves. And we can make this more drastic. We can go big and small, we could do this. So now we're actually changing our emitter size with a signal. And we can do this again with, uh, let's just say the, um, let's go with the rotation of our emitter. Go to noise, crank up our randomness on our noise guess you don't need that kind of randomness, but that's okay. And let's just see how fast this spins around. Okay, that's not enough rotation, that's for sure. So I want it to kind of go flat on to the camera edge. That's almost like a firework at this point. That's really interesting. Okay, and then now what? Okay, I want that speed to be either faster or maybe slower, 0.5 on the speed, and that'll slow down our uh, rotation a little bit. And then of course, we could do this with uh, position as well. So just really quickly, tag, new signal tag, position, drag it into the question mark. We could set up noise. And in this case, you know, we want it to go a little bit up, a lot over, and a little bit back and forth. And our speed, let's just set it kind of slow at first. And now it's also moving around our screen. We turn up our bias, it's gonna move a little bit faster to its corners. And maybe we, maybe we'll, I think what we do is we just tone it down a little bit. <laughs> you don't want it to go too crazy. 
Okay, so now a completely different one that was e even in the example, but I think at this point we could set up more clones because that's always fun. It, to set up more clones, we have to go to our sound effector, and in our emissions, we instead of 50, let's just uh, let's go crazy. Let's go 200. Let's so let's quadruple the amount of clones that it spits out, and then let's just pause it and see what this looks like. You know. It looks like our lighting could be a little bit cleaner on this one. Let's try one of these other uh, render types. That'll be better. That actually has a little shadow going on. And maybe the overall like scale is a little too big as well. But let's see it in context with the other particles. Uh, and then, of course, at any moment, um, just as a last... I, I did it again. I said last again. Uh, just as another idea... <laughs> <laughs> that should be my new catchphrase. Uh, I could take the plane and set up um, X particles collider. And now as things fall, they hit the floor and they bounce off as well. So really interesting way to like emit, not only emit particles, but adjust them. I'm going to turn up our friction here. We can emit particles and fling them around and uh, have them bounce off of objects and just really, really fun ways to set all this stuff up. So you can see all these particles flinging around uh, are seen really easily with X particles uh, 3.5 and the new sound effector as well. It's really fun to play with. And uh, hopefully there's um, something for you to play with if you have uh, X particles 3.5. Thanks again for watching everybody. And hey, don't forget if you are new to X particles and you are looking at getting a license, Please consider getting it through Grayscale Gorilla, where we include over 30 presets to get you up and running, get you started with X Particles right away. All right, with that, we have plenty more tutorials here on YouTube and over at our site, all about X Particles and other parts of Cinema 4D. So I hope you check those out. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in another tutorial really soon. Bye, everybody. Almost every time I do that big wave, I hit my hand on the light. Almost every time. Go back and listen to it. Almost every wave, it starts with like, bing, hitting the light, hurting my hand, make them flint, I'm wincing every time I wave now. I got a wave smaller. Okay, bye everybody.